All right, so we got Captain Titus, the greatest of the greatest of them all. Um, the GOAT, um, the one and only, um, the chosen one. We got the boy Titus. Uh, let's go to the video, man. Who doesn't love themselves an ultramarine? I'll tell you who. Idiots. People who think that just because they're the guys in the box that they're bland and boring, that something being popular automatically means it's lesser in some way. Facts. Some people just refuse to acknowledge that sometimes a thing is the most popular for a reason. Is the the Marines were the best Space Marine Legion and are the best Space Marine chapter ever, and anything to the contrary is cope so potent it could form its own chaos god. But I will admit, for some people at a certain point in time, I can understand kind of people not liking them a bit. A couple books here about the Ultramarines always being the best, a couple books there about the Codex and Gilliman being more revered than the Emperor of Mankind. To those of us not in tune with Matt Ward's clearly correct taste of ultramarine supremacy, the chapter can feel a bit off. Maybe a bit too stuck up, Man, a bit jealous. too obsessed with the Codex, a bit too Mary Suey. But even then, there's still some Ultramarines everyone loves. Ain't it Thiel, that guy who made it so Space Marine sergeants paint their helmets red back in the Horus Heresy. Oh. Malum Kaido, who was a walking screaming exterminatus, and I'm pretty sure he just got lost on his way to join either the Black Templars or World Eaters. And of course, the one and only Captain Dimitri and Titus. He may have been demoted to lieutenant come Space Marine 2, but he's still a captain in my heart. Yes, you may sir. be asking yourself, isn't it better to wait till Space Marine 2 has been fully played through to make this video on the no, war? No. Aren't there going to be a million other videos about this guy all coming out within like a week from each other? Yes. And to that, my answer is yes to both. But I've been doing oh, no, this for over yes three years, and I like to think I've mostly avoided jumping on the hype trains. So I'm letting myself have a YouTube cheat day just this once. <laughs> so listen to the tale of Dimitri and Titus, a man who I almost guarantee you didn't know the first name of before i just said it i'm gonna keep it real i'm gonna keep it real you're right <laughs> you're right I, th I thought his first name was like uh i don't know like tony or something like that or or charlie he looks like a charlie but you know what's even better than a video about titus a video about titus that can get you space marine 2 at a discount and you can do so at green man gaming the sponsor of this video green man gaming is an right, official going retailer going through the sponsor over 1300 publishers now listen real quick i'm gonna be honest with you he was nice right at first prices. i listen i, and more I was calling my just, lovely like, captain audience titus i never really called him like nerds. you can get you know, yourself uh, space marine demetrius that's his name hey that's a brother name just by heading over demetrius that's a but wait the discounts don't end there okay titus all right listen titus below and use the Hey, bro, we XP, might be related, bro. SCP same mom, um, same dad. I don't know. We might have to take one of those little twin three and me tests. As well. But other than that, bro, one, that man Titus. I mean, obviously, you know, bro, he, he's the name of the game. You know, he's in the front. He's he's he's, two, he's in the cover the of the game. That just shows you that he's absolutely three, amazing. Plus, I mean, if I'm being honest with you, he's kind of right. A lot of people do look at like the most popular thing as boring or whatever. Which I mean, to some degree, in some events or whatever, he's right. But let's be honest. A lot of them are jealous because you know Titus is a bigger discount. Did you know the Ultramarines were the 13th Space Marine Legion. If that isn't a sign you should give the voucher a go, I don't know what is. And of course, it'll oh, work still doing ad. Okay. Games it's fine. As I well. think we'll wrap it so up. So what are you waiting for? No, for real, what could you possibly be waiting for? You can go grab yourself one of the most hotly anticipated Warhammer games to come out lately at a discount with Green Man Gaming. Uh -oh. So sign up, grab yourself that voucher, and go teach the world why the Ultramarines are the greatest of them all. True. No, oh, hold on. No, 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 the Salamanders are the greatest of them all. The, the, the Ultramarines, they're number two and all. Like, you know. Hack and slash the enemies of glorious Ultramar. Dimitri and Titus, who for the record I feel very uncomfortable calling by his first name, why? was born on the Ultramarian agri world of Terrain. Tarentus. Tarentus is a mildly interesting world, and feel free to take that as either a backhanded compliment or just simple observation. Everyone lives in these dome cities, and because the planet outside those domes is actually pretty dry, they have to set up moisture traps to capture all that Man, they I know can. That air it makes me like think force, of Tatooine uh, if fire. decided for some insane reason to build a farming community big enough to feed 500 worlds on it. It's part of a group of other agri worlds very cleverly named the Three Planets, and at some point they were invaded by orcs before Marnius Kalgar kicked them out. It got invaded by a demon prince at one point, and the population was massacred, but the planet was eventually cleared back out. This concludes the history of Titus' homeworld. I don't know why I bothered. Titus himself That's was fine. the only child of a pretty normal family. No real standout qualities to him. Not too hot, not too cold, not incredibly rich, or anything really noteworthy. But oh. he did end up being selected as a Space Marine aspirant for the Ultramarine's 10th company, and he performed spectacularly during his trials. He was the kind of aspirant to pass every test and make all the instructors impressed with how cool of a dude he was. Mm, okay, so he was like the... Okay, I automatically know what type of guy he was. So basically... Titus was the guy, he was the guy that, that he did perfectly in all his classics. And uh, whenever it was gym class, he climbed up the rope the fastest. He was the strongest or whatever. He was he was like the 
he was like the John Cena of just life at the time. He was just good at everything. He he was he wasn't he wasn't like the best at one thing. He was just good at everything. He was like the jack of all trades. Okay, okay. Kind of sounds like me to be honest. Sure enough, he would pass the test and become one of the most decorated Marines in the entire chapter. Although not without a few black marks on his record. Uh -oh. As much as people do, and indeed I did, joke about Malum Cato being a black Templar colored blue, the Ultramarines being angry as all hell isn't something unheard of. Oh. When they were the warborn, they sometimes had issues with almost world eaters levels of bloodlust. And to say Gilliman lost his temper a bit during Kalth would be an understatement. That second one was definitely under some extreme circumstances, but a smurf turning person Purple with rage is something that happens. Oh, he was and a sure crash enough, out. Our boy Titus sometimes had issues keeping his temper under mm, control. He was that a sort crash of thing out. is only one that really becomes an issue if it actually harms people, though. And it seems Titus brutally murdered anything that got in his way long before he could take advantage of his tantrums. His backstory even takes some time to establish how Leandros, dickhead though he may be, wasn't completely in the wrong for reporting Titus to the Inquisition. No, 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 no. He was a snitch. He was a yeah, hey, I remember that. He was a snitch. He was mad because Titus was the GOAT. He, he was mad because uh, Titus was basically Super Cena in 2008. He was mad, bro. And this is why you have to go to your He had to go to the Lord Calgary, which is me. He had, to, he had to go to Lord Calgary just to snitch, bro. You're a snitch, bro. You're forever a snitch. You mad because you thought, oh, well, he can't be this good. He got to be uh, under some type of magic. No, he's that good, bro. He's that good, bro. Like, uh, do you not know who he is? This is literally the greatest of all time. This is our John Cena. Are you dumb? <laughs> Still like 99% in the wrong, but there's a little bit of basis for it. As it turns out, Nemiroth, or whatever the chaos sorcerer from the first Space Marine who's completely forgettable compared to Grimskull, wasn't the first time Captain Titus resisted some warp shenaniganery. During a campaign against the Dark Gods, Titus and his squad faced off against a chaos sorcerer. Only Titus returned alive to tell of the tale. Now look, what I just said about Leandros already turned a good half of you away from the video. I know Titus is a good lad. We all know Titus is a good lad. But this is the Imperium. One dude conveniently walking away from a chaos sorcerer that killed everyone around him, seemingly untouched by the warp, is the kind of thing. Okay, I understand. It looks fishy. It looks like, okay, bro, like everybody else died but you. You had to make some type of deal. Like, there's no shot. Bro, but he's, bro, he's that guy, bro. What do you expect? Bro, listen, if you were, but listen, if you were that guy, or if I was that, well, first of all, I think I am. But, like, bro, if we were all that guy, bro, and, you know, like, our partners or whatever, like, you know, they, bro, they time ran out, bro. The hourglass just, they hourglass just faded. And we came back and we're like, yo, yo, King, bro, bro, somebody rolled up on us, bro. Bro, eight teams rolled up on us, whatever. And he's like, wait, but you survived? Like, you only survived? Yeah, of course I did. Like, I'm me. But everybody else, they died and stuff like that. I'm going to be honest with you. If the king looks at me like I'm some type of traitor or whatever, like I, like, you know, uh, worked out, like worked out some type of like sponsorship deal or something like that. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't blame him. But at the same time, bro, Titus is the go. It is what it is, man. This sends alarm bells ringing in everyone's mind. And sure enough, Titus had to keep proving himself over and over again after this incident. But because he's a good lad, he was able to do it. Seemingly because, Duh. in spite of the fact his video game is still a good few hundred Duh. years after he's this happens goat. in universe, he still had his video game protagonist powers at this time. He'd charge in and destroy anyone daring to take on the Ultramarines, facing impossible odds and always bringing glory and honor to his chapter. With a record like he had, it's no wonder they put up with him despite any lingering suspicion. He was just too bad of a dude. 50 he's, years he's down the, the line from when he faced that chaos warrior, he ended up joining the Ultramarine second company, led by Severus Agaman. They were out and about doing Ultramarine things, fighting the enemies of mankind and being the best, when Macrog underwent some rather turbulent weather known as a Tyranid High Fleet invasion. Rushing to defend their home world, they ended up instead joining Imperial forces and cleansing the rest of Ultramar of any lingering Tyranid remnants as the battle had ended by the time they finally arrived. There's another fun way his expanded backstory explains how he's so good at fighting aliens. Though he wasn't part of the Death Watch here, he was explicitly part of kill teams being used to hunt down Tyranids. Since there had to be some restructuring of the Ultramarines on account of their first company being devoured whole, Agaman became the captain of the first company, with Lucian Trajan becoming captain of the second and Titus joining his command squad. After that, we jump forward a century to the next big beat in Titus's life. And I hope you aren't too attached to Mr. Trajan from that one sentence I told you about him, because he's not making it past this one. Uh -oh. The second company went to the planet of Beta Arcturus, and side tangent, I kept thinking for the love of God this was some important planet referenced somewhere else that was in 
incredibly important to the story. Turns out it's not. It's just some system from Mass Effect. Anyways, oh. Baelton was giving this place the old one-two buckle their shoe, so the second company went on in to save the day. Yeah. Trajan and the command squad rushed in to battle the Autark, while the ship they went on in engaged the Eldar ones. How exactly a single Space Marine ship was able to survive a concentrated assault by multiple Eldar ones is left unstated, although I believe it's safe to assume that Titus's video game protag powers are so strong <laughs> they rubbed <laughs> off on the ship itself. True. They didn't rub off on poor Trajan, though. While he did manage to kill the Autark, this was all apparently a clever ruse. While it appeared the Xenos had been driven back, they had actually just faked it and captured a Space Marine in the process. You want to take a guess who that fella was? Do you think it Trajan? Or maybe another Ultramarine's character, such as Cato Sicarius? Mm. Or perhaps even Marnius Calgar himself? Nope, mm. they captured that dickweed Leandros, rather than leave- As they should. I don't like him. Never liked him to begin with. Never liked him, he's a bum. In my eyes, um, I always seen him as a snitch, he's a bum. Um, as a matter of fact, bro, you were always Luigi. You were never Mario. You would never be Mario. Um, with that cut, man, man, I should have you on the list, bro. And I'm not talking about the- the, the you know the, the 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 nice list for Santa. I'm talking about the the other list, bro. You, you, bro, hey, yo yo Leandros or whatever your name is, bro. Let me find out you was on a, a on a Diddy party list. I promise you, bro. You'll be eviscerated. I'll ruin you in front of the millions, bro. Listen, I don't like this guy, to, bro. I hate this dude. I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. He's a jealous. Bro. I ain't gonna say nothing. Being to die, I, 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 however, I, I, listen, I wanted to violate command the I second say nothing. company to Titus and went to rescue him. The elder then sprung the trap, killed him, and Titus himself was forced to intervene and rescue Leandros. Now we know why that bastard was there to begin with He's in the first bomb. Space Marine game. Titus saw a Space Marine get captured by the Eldar and went, yeah, I want him on my command squad. Also, you know me, so I'm going to complain about elves now. I really don't think an Autark for a second company captain and some random Marine is a fair trade. Now if they sacrificed an Autark to capture Marnius Calgar, fair is fair. I can see that being considered an even trade, okay, especially if they that. can grab the Soul Stone for later so they can shove the dude in a Wraith Lord. But the second company captain, even for a chapter like the Ultramarines... Facts. does not seem worth Facts. it to get an auto killed no, no, no. for that. I understand. But his background does need to happen, and his background dictates he becomes the captain of the second company, and sure enough, upon the return to Macrog, Papa Smurf himself promoted Titus to the rank of captain of the second Ultramarines company. Yes, sir. Titus never actually wanted to climb the ranks like this. He just wanted to stay a sergeant and happily kill everything that got in his path for the rest of time. But despite his humility, he accepted the roles that he could do right by both his former friend Trajan and Calgar himself. After all, if Calgar says you're good enough, you're probably good enough. Yeah. And indeed, good enough he was. Using that same strike cruiser that fought the Eldar for some tactical brilliance, the Righteous Fury, he would come to be known as a great example of what an Ultramarine strives to be. An adaptable warrior and tactician who could take man, on whatever mission goat, he was man. given. Many throughout the chapter truly viewed him as an exemplary Marine. Likely helping this was his friendship he had gained at some point with Sergeant Sidonis, the cool, grizzled old soldier guy from Space Marine. He helped cool down some of Titus's more rage-fueled decisions and allowed him to excel to even greater heights. All of this makes it even more shocking when Leandros pulled his BS stun, but let it never be said the Imperium and the people in it will ever give someone the benefit of the doubt. And eventually, after a nice and solid 150 years of service as captain of the second company, if I have my timeline right, Space Marine 1 happens. He's got two gold ones in Space Marine 1, which is 200 years, so that's about right. And you know, there's only so much I'll talk about here because it's a fun video game you should play. You probably already have, frankly. To briefly sure. summarize, orcs are attacking the planet of Gryia because that's what they do. It's a forge world that specializes in making titans, so there's not a chance in hell the Imperium is letting that one fall. And Titus goes in to save the day. The Codex Astartes does not support this action. Shut the fuck up, Leandros. <laughs> Titus murders a whole lot of orcs, demons, traitors, is finished with this orc even though he ain't finished with Titus, and then he quick time events a Chaos Sorcerer to death. Leandros proves that looking a gift horse in the mouth is the Imperium's standard operating procedure and hands over a space marine seemingly immune to chaos corruption to the Inquisition on a silver platter to be tortured. Now initially I figured that, hey, this Inquisitor seems like a bit of a cool guy. His name is Jerome Thrax, and at first I figured he was on Titus's side. He notices that no. Titus's injuries were chaos inflicted, which made me think he was a somewhat rational guy. It seemed to me like he was going, hey man, it looks like chaos ran him over with a truck. Are you sure he's a heretic? I figured he was only taking Titus in because better safe than sorry, and he'd at worst get demoted from captain for a- Here's the thing, right? Uh, to 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 the guy to this guy that the, uh, that made the call, to the to this guy right here that made the call, whatever. I don't necessarily blame him. You know why? Because when you have an annoying, ugly prick like him, bro, in your ear all day long, saying, "Hey, bro, that guy over there, yo, 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 
there's no way he's like us. Like, there's no way he's like me. Like, you know, I'm obviously, like, you know, I'm a weakling or whatever. But there's no way that guy, yeah, you know, Titus, you know, the GOAT. There's no way he's like us. Like, bro, he got hit with all types of these. He got hit with, with mashed potatoes over here. He got hit with Thanksgiving turkey over here. There's no way. Like, bro, there's, like, there's legit no way. Like, you know, he's like us. I think you should look into him. Like, bro, like, I don't blame him, bro. Because when you have somebody, when you have a bum like this in your ear, yapping all day i can't lie to you bro i'm like you know what bro what do you what do you want you, you want me to you want me to take this guy in okay cool bro we'll scan him bro cool we'll take him in yo titus come with us bro even though low-key i don't think that you're anything this bum to the next to me bro he's just yapping 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 about you because about you being uh you know uh about you being corrupted or whatever or, or you're a heretic whatever i'm gonna be honest bro I, bro if i'm titus bro I would have gave this bum right here, bro, a little bit of chicken, a little bit of mashed potatoes, bro. The left and right, bro. The one and two. Like the we. I can't lie to you, bro. The, bro, he, bro. He, we got to run our 30 seconds, bro. That, that's if I'm Titus. If I'm Titus, bro, I'm walking up to him. I'm like, bro, come out here, bro. Somebody put the timer up, bro. Somebody turn the, uh, the, the hourglass upside down, bro. We got to get our 30 seconds on because there's no way, bro. You're too jealous, bro. He's a, he's a jealous bum. Man, it looks like Chaos ran him over with a truck. Are you sure he's a heretic? I figured he was only taking bum. Titus in because better safe than sorry. And he'd at worst get demoted from captain for appearance's sake and because Kato Sicarius needs to happen. But as it turns out, Thrax is not a fan of Space Marines, which is actually a surprisingly common viewpoint for anyone above the rank of the standard guardsman. He was one of the first people to point to the Astral Claws around the time of the Badab War and go, these fellas ain't right, kill them with hammers. He was the sort of Inquisitor who would take prisoners first and ask questions never, which while in some ways does make him a bit better than the more trigger-happy ones, is also more monstrous because he's torturing them. And the Space Marine he captures, Titus included, are sure enough not only tortured both physically and psychically, but have a habit of never being released back to their home chapters. Marnius Calgar himself oh, repeatedly mind. asked Thrax where the hell Titus was, but he was always ghosted by the Inquisitor. Eventually, the Ultramarines erected a statue of Titus in their fortress monastery, honoring what the many surely thought is just another fallen hero of the chapter. Titus would suffer this torture for over a century during this time, enduring it all the while. Eventually, freedom would come from an oh-so-perfectly ironic source. Inquisitor Thrax, on his way to deal with a chapter of Space Marines that had become corrupted by chaos, was himself possessed by a demon and slain by none other than the Grey Knights. Another Inquisitor from the Ordo Malleus found his secret stash of Space Marines and sent them to be tested for any impurities. Naturally, Titus passed with flying colors, but he's been Duh. changed a bit. Turns out a century of inquisitorial torture can make even the greatest of them all a bit jaded and bitter. Dang. No major spoilers I mean, from duh. Space Marine 2, but Titus has become far more displeased towards the Inquisition in general. Based on in-game cutscenes, he seems to have developed a habit of keeping things close to his chest and not sharing information he doesn't... Duh, why would he? Why would you try... Duh. If you get... Bro, if you've been tortured and locked up for like a... a bro, a century... Why would you trust the next person? Why would you share information? Why would I share information to the guy that snitched on me, bro? And said that I was this, even though I really wasn't. And they locked me up and, 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 and I was tortured for like, for like, a, you said a century, right? That's a hundred years. Bro, I'm not sharing notes, bro. No types of information. None. Oh, bro, what's, what's your favorite meal? Oatmeal. What's your favorite snack? Rocks. Like, bro, 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 I'm I'm not sharing no information. Like, what? Team relevant to the mission. Hard to blame him for this too much. What are you talking a bit about? more sadly than that is that Titus felt he could no longer return to the chapter. From his perspective, the Ultramarines never contacted him, and he took that as a sign he was oh. no longer worthy to rejoin his brothers. Shame mm, none of the okay. Inquisitors or Grey Knights he doubtlessly spoke to at some point saw fit to inform him Thrax was just not passing the messages along, but that's Imperial bureaucracy for ya. Instead, he officially joined the Death Watch under the name Nullus as a Black Shield, allowing him to serve the Imperium in some capacity still. Not feeling he was worthy of even keeping his goddamn name, this was the best he could get. Self-esteem issues aside, he naturally served under the Death Watch well, and Space Marine 2 happens. Yeah. And while I did say no spoilers for the game, for the most we, part, I, tutorial I spoilers happened. don't count, and you can see he's a Primaris in the trailer. Yeah. But if that bothers you, skip ahead with the video chapters. They gone?
Okay, good. There I don't mean go. to sound rude, but it really isn't that mind-blowing. Yeah. It's the story that needs to be part of a hack-and-slash-murder-thon game. It's just there to get us to the killing. Titus and his Death Watch team were deployed to the planet Kataku, which was under a heavy assault by Tyranid forces. I, I know what he happened. He was knocked yeah, off the ship during entry. The rest of his Death Watch team he was by dies himself. right before or right yeah. after he arrives to link up with them, and he tries to solo a Carnifex, which goes exactly as well as you'd think it would. Yeah. During this time, the chief librarian of the Ultramarines, Vero Tigurius, had sensed his soul and ordered Titus's old cruiser to beeline it for him. They arrived just in time to save him, but since yeah. he was pretty brutally injured, the only choice to keep him alive was to have him undertake the Rubicon Primaris. Yeah. Some people were iffy about him coming back, but Tigurius had sensed that he had no taint of chaos within his soul. And like I said with Kalgar earlier, when the guy strong enough to talk to the hive mind of the Tyranids says you're in the clear, you're probably in the clear. In the Being clear. a video game protagonist, he naturally survives the process, and the rest is gloriously <sighs> rendered high-definition murdery history. Something something Tyranids, something something Thousand Suns, something yeah. something please stop oh. trying to get me to buy Zangor's Games Workshop, Sorry about that, it's not gonna happen. My bad, no. Why do people like this guy? Well, saying anything definitive might go. get me yelled at, so I can tell you why I like him. For one, video game protagonist. You know an easy way to get someone to like a character? Have them control the dude for a fun campaign. Yes, that is sir. the character of a game that, while certainly not revolutionary, was good fun and a nice little taste of the 40k universe. Indeed, learning about some very small basics of 40k through the first Space Marine isn't the worst of ideas, even if the only real takeaways you'd get are the Ultramarines can tear through orcs and demons like nobody's business. His feats are the kind of stuff that in a book would get people calling BS on him, but since we're butchering our way through the enemies as Titus, it's a different story. This isn't a criticism, just something I've noticed. Speaking of Ultramarines, though, while I'm not entirely sure on when exactly the height of Ultramarine glazing was, when Space Marine <laughs> came out in 2011, it was certainly still in the minds of people. So fans of 40k might have initially expected Titus to be another boring Ultramarine character, mm. going on and on about Gilliman and the Codex and all that crap. And then the game ends with him looking Leandros in the eyes and calling him a failure for refusing to do anything but look at the Codex for guidance. True. In the meta context of 40k at the time, that makes him a damn note Worthy care. There isn't, and, and here's the thing, right? Obviously, I'm catching up like on more lore and stuff like that. But the reason I think that, like, and this is true, obviously, I troll a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm stupid, whatever. Da, 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 da. But the thing is, I think the reason a lot of people like him is because you have, you sort of have, have like a connection with him. He has like a, yes, he is the epitome of like a, of like a hero. Yeah, not a hero in a sense of like, oh, he does just a, like a bunch of good things. But he's the epitome of, of what a main character is. Uh, obviously strong. I mean, he he mostly always wins, but at the same time, there's like a little drama to him. Um, he's not the most perfect guy in the world, but at the same time, he's really good at everything. Um, and then you get to actually control him. And then, you know, he's been around the series. I mean, like he said, like since what, 2011? Bro, how many? That's like, what, 13 years? So like a lot of Warhammer fans, they most likely know who this guy is because he's been around for so long. Look at people like um like like Kratos from God of War, bro. We've been playing for bro. We legit been playing as Kratos since what like 2005, I think. That's what. How many years is that? What's that? 19. That's like 20 years. That's like a 20 year franchise basically of we playing as like the same character. Of course, everyone's gonna love the guy because bro, he's been he's been here for so long. Obviously, he's a powerful character. Obviously, you know like his look his look is nice as well. But at the same time, bro, like. Like, the connection that we have, like, to Kratos and stuff like that, bro, that's a 20-year connection. Well, for, like, most people. But some people, you know, they just now got into him or whatever. But at the same time, you know, obviously now, you know, nowadays, you know, there's, like, he has a son now. There's, like, a lot more drama with other gods and stuff like that. But back then, he was just this murderous killer that we all loved because, you like, you know, like, why not? It was this dude that, that went around. He was... He, but he would like, you know, take down all these big bosses and stuff like that. It was crazy, you know. And now, you know, he's more, obviously, he's older now. Again, he has a son. There's more drama. There's more, he, he go, he's, he's going up against like other powerful people, you know, and stuff like that. So, you know, and it, like Kratos, he has a story, you know. With Titus, you know, he has a story as well. He has like, his ambition is crazy. His character, the way he's like, his the voice actor. Uh, and stuff. I know I'm glazing right now, but that's what makes a really good main character, you know, uh, all those like little bitty elements, whatever it makes up a main character. So I see why like a lot of people like him. I like him. I think he's the GOAT. So. And he's a pretty cool one, all things considered. He's humble, giving at least the slightest see, bit yeah, of care see? about guardsmen and battle brothers around him. He's highly driven, powering yep, through all adversity you. against the odds. And he's seemingly immune to warp corruption, a neat plot hook that could go in a few different ways. Take your bets now, folks. Blank Titus, he, he's a Imperial good guy. Saint Titus, he's a, he's a good or guy. just plain willpower. To sort of repeat a point, though, him being a badass video game character undoubtedly helps. 
there True. are deeper, more well-written characters in 40K. There are more fun characters in 40K. Even ignoring anything like taste or how... But true and i don't mean to pause on that much that's true but he's good in every single category yes there are more fun people in 40k but they lack personality they lack story they lack drama they lack whatever like yes it may be fun for them to play as but for for titus he's good at every single like his character is good at everything even the voice acting sounds really good like everything is like it, it's like it's like a good guy john cena superhero like type of you know, like, uh, like, mark to it. I know I'm glazing, but, you know, it is what it is. Well written, you might perceive him as. There are plenty of characters with far more screen time than Titus could ever dream True, of. Yeah, but yeah. when we see Titus, we see him as we play him. A space marine ripping yeah. his way through countless hordes of orcs, tyranids, and more. Yeah. It's fun to watch Titus do his thing, in part True. because we're right there with him. Is it a bit of an unfair advantage compared to novel-only characters? Maybe, but I personally I mean, think but... it's just a sign GW should really invest in making characters more fun like that. In fact, I'll just come out and say it. Bring back Matt Ward writing. Just have everyone get Matt Ward writing equally. If everyone has plot armor, no one has plot armor. Or at least the imaginary True. fights with our toy army dudes can be that much cooler. And that's Dimitri and Titus. I still hate saying his first name, but he's a real cool dude. Go play Space Marine 2 now. It's out for everyone. Even the people out. who don't instinctively pre-order things with a skin of something they like on it. Thank you, as <laughs> always, to my wonderful channel members. Oh, man. Shout out to everybody, you know, for watching the video, man. Shout out to all of his members. Um, other than that, man... Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, man. I mean, like you said before, like Titus is like a Titus is like the epitome of like yes, he don't got the he only got like the most screen time. Yes, he's not, you know, uh the most talented guy there. Yes, he's not like, you know, um like the like the coolest guy to play like play as or whatever. But at the end of the day, um I just think that whenever it just comes to like like the hero, if I like listen, if I was to pick the hero out of everybody, out of all the characters, whatever, bro. Titus is like the picture perfect like hero or like protagonist or main character. Obviously, hero doesn't mean uh main like main character or nothing like that. But like Titus is like the main. He's he's noble, you know. He's noble. Uh, he's humble, but at the same time, he stands up for something. He's not just like a pushover or whatever. He has character. Um, he has grit, you know. And I know again, I know I'm glazing right now, but um, that's just what his character is, man. Comment down below, man. What do you guys think about this? I'll see you guys Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, man. Thank you guys for all the support over the past few days. It's been absolutely ridiculous, robunculous. I'm going to see you guys like this amount.